Hey everybody. So today we have a highly requested video, but it's going to be a pretty simple one, right? We're going to talk about the pros and cons of different hand stitching methods with leather. Um, we hand stitch everything, we don't use sewing machines, and there are multiple ways to hand stitch leather. And so we're going to go over the popular kind um, ways to do it and kind of talk about the goods and the bads of all of them because they all have pros and cons. So let's get into it. So the first type, we have a whole video on it, and I'll put a link in either the description or a thing will pop up somewhere, is a saddle stitch. Now a saddle stitch is a two needle stitch, and basically what's happening, it looks like a machine stitch. I got some paper here so I can do some illustrations because I'm not good with computer graphics. So if this is the leather, a saddle stitch is essentially one stitch going like this and then another stitch going the opposite way. So it's essentially just a double stitch, right? Now, um, <clears throat> we like this stitch because if one of, this, one of these breaks, so you have a break right there, and this whole stitch pulls out all the red, the black is still holding the piece together and it's still very strong. You can suspend 100 pound weights, well, 50 pound weights from this specifically, but if you get something thicker like this stuff, this is from main thread, you can suspend 100 pounds of weight from one strand and this is not going to break. So the reason it's called the saddle stitch is because this was used on saddles because it was easily repairable in the field. All you had to do was get a needle, go in and out and in and out and in and out, and your saddle was repaired. To do a saddle stitch, we're going to go really quickly on this one. What we do, you can use a stitching pony, you can use just your hands like I do. You basically use two needles and you go in, like that. So you're going to go in with one, in with the other, and pull them tight. And then you have good tension on either side. Now we use a method called the leapfrog method of saddle stitching, which does the same thing, but allows you to do it without a stitching pony. I'm not going to go through that because we have a whole video on it. That was the video I linked to. But you can get a good idea of what a saddle stitch is all about. By using the two needles, by using the two threads, we're able to simultaneously create two running stitch lines for extra strength, and we're able to keep our tension perfect by pulling on both of our threads. So for example, if I were to just put one thread through and pull it, you see how my tension goes out of, out of line. We have a straight line and then it curves because we don't have the tension of the other thread pushing backwards like when we pull both of them. So that's why a saddle stitch is done like this. These are some of the benefits to a saddle stitch. Now you also have, I believe it's the French style of saddle stitch where you put one through, then you wrap one around, essentially tying a small knot before you put it through. And then when you do it that way, you have a knot in the middle of this leather so that if a stitch clips, it's not gonna come backwards. I don't do it like that, um, I just saddle stitch through because regardless you're always going to have, if one stitch breaks you always have the other one, like on our drawing, supporting the piece, but if you choose to do it that way it's even more strong and it can make the seam even more rigid. The next popular stitch is called a running stitch and this is done not only in leather work and all sorts of uh, quilting and sewing and everything like that, a running stitch is basically just half of a saddle stitch. So if this is our leather, a running stitch we're going to use a single needle and we're just going to go in and out, in and out in and out, in and out. And that's it. So where you have the saddle stitch, you have two of these running basically in parallel, I guess, even though they cross over each other. Um, a running stitch is just one. So to do that, pretty simple. You go in one hole, and then you go out the other, and you just do that over and over again. So the risks with this one are if one of these stitches breaks, you don't have the second stitch to hold it together, right? And the other thing is that if you're not careful, it can be kind of difficult to keep your tension right because you're, you don't have the other thread, I can't even see the hole that I'm going, you don't have the other thread to balance out. So if you're pulling too hard, your whole seam can get wavy. But if you're careful, it looks really nice. It is a different look. So you're gonna have sort of a polka dot look on your leather piece. You're not gonna have a full stitch, right? But, um, 
people do this a lot with lacing. Like if instead of thread, you would use a leather. Um, and people, this is a very, this is, I think the first leather thing I ever made was I was nine years old in summer camp and we just did a simple running stitch and my mom still has the keychain today. So this is not a bad stitch at all. It's just a different look, but I think it's not something that a lot of people realize that they can do with leather. Um, there's nothing wrong with this. The only thing you have to really remember is the use case. So if you have a business making leather goods and you want to have a lifetime warranty, this stitch is probably going to last longer than this stitch because you have doubled the amount of stitching, double the strength, which means that each stitch is holding half the pressure of the piece. I mean, we're not dealing with construction here. These things don't get hundreds of pounds of force applied to them, but I'm talking long term. We've been in business almost 15 years. We see returns now. We offer a lifetime warranty. This is what you want to do if you want to limit your repairs that you're going to have to do. However, this one works just as well if you're doing like bags, if you're doing um, pretty stuff that isn't going to get used a lot. Um, this is a totally viable option and I personally think that it looks very folksy and very nice. So here's a comparison between a running stitch and a saddle stitch fully done. Now you can kind of see here, I don't know if the light works super well, but you can see how this is very flat and even because you have the tension of both threads working together to keep a nice straight seam. On this one, it's fairly even, but you can see where you have bumps. You can see where, um, you know, this is compared to this, where our seam here is a little more wavy. If you like that, that's fine. It does has nothing to do with, it, it's only an aesthetic thing, right? The third stitch is when we take a running stitch and we do what's called going out and back to create kind of a saddle stitch, but not really. And I'm going to explain why, and I'm, I'm going to explain why I really just don't like this method of saddle stitching. <coughs> Bless you. Excuse me. So this is our running stitch. What happens when we go out and back? Well, when we go out and back, what we do is we make a running stitch first, then we come around and we go backwards doing another running stitch to create kind of a saddle stitch. Oop, that's upside down. The stitch is the same, but there are some differences and I think it's important to go through them because it's a long-term thing that will affect how the piece is going to wear in some instances. So here's our running stitch and to go out and back it's very simple. Once we've reached the end we're just going to go in the hole and we're going to work our way backwards going through every other, not every other hole, going through the same hole but looping all of these empty spots. And we're just going to do that until we get to the end. Now Here's the issue with this stitch. I used to do this stitch. I did this stitch for the first two years. This is how I sewed everything um, because I didn't have the resources to learn that a saddle stitch was an actual stitch. Just, they just, I didn't have any books. I didn't have anything. Now the problem with doing it this way is all tension related. And I found this out because I do have pieces out there that are 10 years old that have been used for 10 years. And the tension in the thread when you go out and back is the biggest problem with this stitch. Because what's happening is, no matter how careful you are, this row of stitching is never going to be the same tightness as the row of stitching that I'm now doing coming back. And you can kind of see it, even though I'm pulling, you can see how we have these highs and lows, highs and lows, highs and lows. Now what's going to happen over time with that, if this is a wallet or something, I mean, A, it doesn't really look very good. So if you look at, this is essentially the same stitch uh, mechanically but we're doing it in a different way and you can see how our stitches aren't stacking. Um, it's kind of scraggling all over the place even though we've used the same stitching prongs, the same needles, the same thread, and it's the same person doing the stitch. So you get a little bit of a tidier result when you do a full-blown two needle saddle stitch just right from the get-go. But the second problem is the tension. So you can see, I think you can see, can you see? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, how our original stitch that we came down is pretty tight, but when we're coming back, even though I pull, our second stitch is sticking up. Now, if this is a wallet, what's going to happen there over time? I'm going to come down here. Our wallet goes in a pocket, out of a pocket, in a pocket, out of a pocket, in a pocket, out of a pocket. With our flat saddle stitch, all of these stitches are getting evenly worn. But because we have peaks and valleys on our out and back saddle sit, or on our out and back stitched seam, the thread is going to wear unevenly which means that there are going to be pressure points that are created where specific stitches are going to wear much quicker and you're going to have a lot more breaking. 
So if you have these two pieces that are made into a wallet, even though it's the same thread with essentially the same stitch, this stitching, I guarantee you, is going to wear out quicker because of all these peaks and valleys and unevenness. And that's why I really, the running stitch is fine. I understand not knowing how to do the saddle stitch so you do it this way, but you, if now that you're watching this video, you know, do a saddle stitch. It'll make your pieces last much, much longer. Your, your thread will not, um, your thread won't break down as quickly. And so I'm just gonna continue doing this so you can see I'm pulling hard, as hard as I can, trying to keep my tension right, but it is very, very difficult to do that. And it can be remedied by just using, it actually takes less time to do a proper saddle stitch. So this is the out and back stitch, and that is why, it's not that I hate it, I don't hate it. I understand why people do use it. I used it as well when I didn't know any better. But if you can avoid using it, it is much, much better practice to get in the habit of doing a proper saddle stitch. All right, so our last stitch isn't like one particular stitch. It's just any stitch because there are, you know, hundreds of different, um, I would call them decorative stitches that you could do. And this is not specific. If you're using leather lace, this is totally different. Um, I'm just specifically talking to any stitch where you're looping your thread around the outside seam. So you can see I have two pieces of leather here and I'm just using a whip stitch, which is, I don't, you wouldn't, you know, people don't usually use this in leather work, but sometimes they do. Um, to just put this seam together, right? The problem with this, and this is going to extrapolate out to a very common thing that a lot of people, including us, do on some of our leather pieces. We'll do a saddle stitch like this, but that at the end, we'll wrap it around the outside seam. That's okay. It's not super problematic, but what you do need to realize is anytime you put thread over the top of an outside seam, guess what's gonna happen? You've been watching this far, you probably already know what I'm gonna say. When this gets put into use, that thread is the first thing that's gonna contact the ground, the side of someone's pocket, uh, the seat, the wall, if it's a bag that's being hung. So you have to be very cognizant of where you put these style stitches or where you loop stitches over, right? So for example, if, you're, if this is a wallet, I'm probably not gonna want anything on an exterior seam, but if I have an interior seam with a pocket that's not gonna get rubbed up against, I can loop that over all I want, and I know that it's not really gonna get any abrasion, or there isn't gonna be, it's not gonna be abrasive? I don't, know the, I don't know how to use the right word. Nothing's gonna rub up against it and break it. Whereas if we're on the outside seam, this thing is gonna get just abused every day, and you're pretty much just asking for trouble down the road, and it happens fairly quickly. Whereas with the saddle stitch, you have no stitching, you have no stitches here, you have no thread to worry about. You can rub on, you, this can It's only gonna get and, better. Yeah, it, it burnishes, <laughs> really. Yeah. Um, whereas if you have even just one little stitch um, wrapped around here, once that breaks, it's a saddle stitch, so you know, you can t your customer or whoever's carrying it can tie it off, but it is gonna be need to be repaired. Now, if you wanna do this on the inside of a bag, if you wanna do, let's see, we say we wanna sew these flat like this and you want to do a whip stitch like that, that's fine, just hammer it down and it's in the middle of a piece. But if you have stitching going over your outside seams, that is something to keep track of. The other thing, I don't really know how to do it by hand, but there's um, a lot of people will do like the decorative sort of, I think it's like a Nordic stitch, but it's essentially a chain stitch. If you're using thicker thread that raises your stitching up, it's gonna do the same thing even though it doesn't cross over. So just be careful. It's very pretty. I, I, I don't. No, I don't hate it. I love the look of these decorative stitches, but in practice, sometimes I'll see pictures where I'm like, that's really beautiful, but if it gets used, that stitching is gonna fray and snap in a year of use. So it's just something to think about. And with that, I think that's pretty much where we're gonna end it. I mean, you guys know that we mostly use saddle stitching. I think that it's important as a beginner myself that went down this route to point out that there are better ways. Don't even bother learning to stitch this way. It's just as easy to do a proper saddle stitch. It's much stronger and your pieces will last much longer. And it's about learning proper technique. You don't wanna start out with bad habits that you have to unlearn before you learn the proper habits a second time. So again, I'm gonna put our saddle stitching tutorial You don't uh, in the comment, in the description. You don't need a stitching pony for the way that we do it. If you wanna use a stitching pony, go for it. Um, and if you're going to do decorative stitching, just make sure that you're cognizant of where that stitching is going to land on the piece you're making to make sure that it's not going to break quickly once it gets put into use. 
All right, so that's going to be about it. Um, fairly simple, but I think an important small video to make. Uh, let us know in the comments which stitching you prefer, how you guys do it. I'm really interested to know like what the, the more popular stitching methods are, because obviously we love making content for you. Um, and if you all are out there doing something that we're not even aware of, I'm happy to learn it. I'm happy to incorporate it into our projects so that you can then get patterns and make stuff that you like. Um, so have a good holiday. I think this is coming out on Christmas, but regardless what holiday you're, you're celebrating, hope everyone's having a happy and healthy end of their year, and we'll see you in the next one.